Tu tienes sida. Cold was how he told me. Heartless and unholy. Neither before nor after have I ever cried as hard as I did the day I found out. I'm sure my tears and cries drowned out any kind of laughter that might have filled the hospital rooms next door. I knew life was a journey and all I ever wanted to do was explore. Physical travel was not necessary to navigate through my grid, see? As a kid, I don't remember her showing any signs of mental illness. To this day, she falls into an isolated reality shared by other paranoid schizophrenics, but still, she is my mother. From the time of my birth being raised, running around as a child, to the time she moved us to a new apartment in Miami, to that dreadful day death walked into my hospital room and told me I was leaving with it. She put her finger to her lips as if to say to him, not like this. Yet without mercy, he said it. Tu tienes sida. Sida, that word, carried so much stigma. Associated with those who live promiscuous lifestyles was now stuck to me like stereotypes labeled on individuals they do not understand. I know who I am. I am the soldier who drops his sword to cry for just a while. Deep inside this cold armor lays the warrior with the heart of a child, with the love of a child, with the effervescence of a child, with the passion for life only children exhibit before they learn of disappointment, trauma, and heartbreak. At La Carreta is where we met. He was a lot older but showed interest in my chaotic life, my manager, my lover, my sense of stability in a life seemingly not my own, spinning out of control, acquired immune deficiency syndrome brought all of it to a complete stop. From then on, I started to count and learn to stay counting. Five years since my blood has been considered tainted. Four pills religiously taken on a daily basis. Three times Cupid's arrow pierced my heart since I was a young boy. Two seconds to know it's not too late to care about what's really important. And one life to live, to love, to continue fighting for. To continue striving for. To create more goals I continue flying toward. Now instead of worrying to keep account of my T-cells, I keep account of my blessings. Before leaving Cuba, I remember my life as if nothing tragic has or ever will happen. And now all I need is time. Time to breathe, time to live, time to allow my body a chance to be forgiven by my own heart. And I'm sorry, but I also need space. Space to make right the sins I have committed for wanting to live a life of a young man who was looking for love.